Hey everybody, this is Brandon Stevens with the Online Prosperity Show. And today we're gonna to talk about how to be legendary as a young hustler. All right, so welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity TV Show. And today we've got none other than Brandon. Brandon, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing really good. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Great stuff. Now, Brandon started years ago. Essentially, he started with a web design company, and then he took it to starting a new company called Aro Media, is it? Arrogant Media. Arrogant Media. See, I was yep. trying to be nice there. I was not trying to <laughs> press what is this all about there, Brandon? Uh, okay, well, first of all, what I am, I'm, I was actually born in 95. I'm 22 years old at the moment, so I'm fairly young myself. But um, back in high school, I started my first, on, well, I don't want to call it entrepreneur journey. It was kind of something I did that I later figured out it was my first lapse at being an entrepreneur. Basically, by the time I graduated high school, I made my first 200K, which was insane. But how I did it was it was near the second dot-com crash, as I called it, where we could buy domain names, source traffic through them, fix them up, build a website out of them, and flip them for a large amount of cash because it was right when dot-coms had the highest price tag. So I did that persistently for a couple of years, and we had a ton of money, and it was awesome. You know, like, but I was a kid. I was foolish. I was 17, 18 years old. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a freaking clue. You know, so it's like well, I ended up coming – up with all this money and it's like i was like a, back before that i was nobody so i have all this money and i'm like do it I and mean, you know like i'm doing well and it's rolling it's rolling rolling i get this like feeling where i like high risk stuff i as you, i graduate high school i have two hundred thousand plus in the bank and i'm I, i'm just from the small town hence in new hampshire country boy like what, what's going on at this point <laughs> Do yeah. you always spend the two hundred in the one shop that's in um in in the in in in, in the in the county? <laughs> it, it, it took me. Let's put it this way: it took me exactly a year and a half to lose it all. But, well, okay, you were seventeen. That's that's a given. So, what exactly <laughs> did you do to amount to this two hundred k, especially at that age? To amount to it, we bought and flipped domain names right at the prime area where dot coms were the highest price tag. So it was before they started the dot biz and the dot us and the dot shop. So it's before they flooded the market. Great stuff. And what sort of knowledge did you have at 17 to know that this was going to be the next big thing? None. None, not at all. We were actually, I was in graphic design class one day in high school and we we're talking about designing websites and I stumbled upon GoDaddy, an auctioning site for it. And I started just going through it. And then I saw, I think it was President Barack Obama memorabilia.com going for $45,000. And I was like, there's got to be something to this. And then from then on, I just, I went home and I started looking and researching and researching. And next thing I knew, I was just producing. I was buying, flipping, making gambles on it. And it just, it did well for a year. It did for like one year exactly. It did amazing. And it, but. That, that wasn't even that I wouldn't even call it a business. It was just something I did, but it was my first jab at entrepreneurship without me even knowing it, I would say. Great stuff. I really applaud you because right now we might be talking to 17 year olds, 18 year olds that think that they, they're not capable of reaching out into the internet space or start a business. What is the one thing that you can just tell them to do right now to, you know, for, so, uh, it's all about, I, I'm pretty sure if anybody doesn't know where to start for business. So one thing I'm going to say is research social media and social media businesses, because I believe starting a digital agency is the quickest way to six figures you'll ever make. Great stuff. Okay. So you've mentioned social media and you've got your own groups that you are handling on social media way we've met. Tell us a little bit about right. those how it has built your personal brand. Oh, my Are You Legendary group? Yes. All right, so I run, I run the group Are You Legendary Bro, which in about two months we grew to over 200 members. It is free, but it's private. We have a moderator who goes through every single person who tries to get into the group and make sure they're not selling, they're not a guru, they're not anything, because I don't allow people to sell within my group. But it has pretty much positioned me as well, it's positioned me as the go-to guy for the up-and-coming social media realm. And I, I, I like to use the tag a lot, I am not your guru. Like, I, I'm 
pretty much prestigious for the fuck your guru movement, which is really brash, but it's a point I'm trying to make. It's because I spend a lot of my time outside of my business giving away stuff that most people would package for $1,000 plus, you know, courses, ideas, all this stuff. I'll do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people for free and actually produce an actionable result that allows them to scale their business. And from then on, they're usually hooked. Great stuff. Obviously, right now you're throwing out your time, your value, and obviously this is exactly what you do um, within your business, okay? Although exactly. you couldn't take advantage of it when you get into um, a legendary bro group. Now, how, what inspired this? What inspired your fuck off guru persona? Well, when, back when I was, um, before I started my own business, like about a year ago, I started my web development company that eventually turned into my social media design company, Arrogant Media, which is going to be based on storytelling and, you know, like positioning people as authorities on social media within their niche. Now, what started the, fu you know, fuck your guru movement was when I started out, I probably Honestly, it probably blasted through $10,000 I didn't have just trying to learn stuff and buying stuff from people, running into scam artists, doing courses that made no sense to me. And it was just kind of like this, this whole escapade of four to six months where it was like, what the hell am I actually doing? And it's like, you know, everywhere I turned, there was a sponsored ad on Facebook about, you know, like the flashy cars, the awesome lifestyle, the design, but no one actually told me, like I could consume a whole module of information from these guys and it wouldn't get me down to the first step actionable result of how the fuck do I start a business? <laughs> like, you know, it's like they, they tell you the top end, but they never actually give you the backbone. I've been, I've been in that situation too. Coming in from um, Africa, you can see from Zimbabwe, I wanted to get onto the first thing that I latched onto. And as you say, burning through cash that you don't have, uh, learning from people that actually haven't made a sale and the only sale they've made is selling you on the correct them uh, knowing something. I call else. them paper gurus. <laughs> say, say that again. I call them paper gurus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Explain that a little bit. So that because what we face is people when they're starting, they jump on to all the shiny objects. And I always try and tell people that laptop lifestyles only exists in fraudulent Facebook ads. Okay. If you really, really take right. it up to the beach, it will be filled with sand and it won't work. Okay. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I right. like that. If you bring it to the beach, you'll fill with sand and it won't work. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, great. So your past experience, you started off as a uh, roofer, uh, as we were speaking. Yeah. Right. What was the transition from, you know, hammering nails to hammering keyboards? Well, so pretty much what happened was I was in a I was in a dark period of my life and I needed a job really bad. And there was a local home improvement company that really they were coming up through the ranks and they're doing pretty damn good. But right. they didn't have any social media, they didn't have any web development, they didn't have any of that. So I knew from kind of like my web development stuff, like that I had started this is before I officially launched my business. And I mean this was when I was getting into it and I thought, hey, why not go? So I went in, I contacted this guy. And uh, he's, he was pretty chill. He's cool. And I told him, I'm like, look, you're going to need someone like me in the next year. I promise you that. I'm like, I don't have roofing experience. I'm not a roofer, but I know you need a roofer. And I also guarantee you're going to need this, you know, this web design, the social media and stuff. So pretty much what we did was he hired me on the spot. He, forget, he hired me on the spot just because of how abrasive I was. Because I went there and I was polite, but I was confident. That is one thing that I can't stress enough to people is be confident. No one's going to hire you. No one's going to trust you if you're shy. So we go in there and he hires me. And I ended up, I was part-time roofer, part-time social media design. In exactly nine months, I doubled their revenue just from social media alone. And it's like, I got, to, I got to the point where we were working on the roof 80, 85 hours a week. I was working in the social media, you know, the overtime after that. I was doing stuff for him. We we're launching, you know, we we're helping his company grow. We were doing mailing lists, email campaigns, all the stuff, the local market, getting a ton of people involved. And I realized he looks at me one day and he goes, why don't you run your own business? He's like, why are you even hired under me? And from then on, it was kind of like a click in my brain of, 
he, he thinks I can do it. Like I finally found someone who thought I could do it. You know, like he's like, this is a business owner, a guy who's making around $400,000 a year at this point, telling me that I would be good running my own business. So we got into this big Hollywood director's job and two weeks into it, I gave him a call and I said, look, I was like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm not quitting because I don't want to work with you. I'm quitting because I want to run my own business, just as you said. And then a, exactly a week later, he hired me back under, under my company, that, or as I should say, my personal brand at that point, because I didn't even start a company. I just quit and I started working. I started producing results as me, you know, as my personal brand. I didn't need to do an LLC. We got a DBA. I started showcasing what I knew online clients knew me you know his his clients knew me other roofers knew me and all yeah. of a sudden you know i was a social media guy and people were like hey i need him good stuff so obviously brandon from what i'm gathering from you you've created your own opportunities first of all when you were 17 you looked at the dot com uh loophole and then you bought all those websites which resulted in 200k um in gross income and then now while you were working as a roofer you also just noticed an opportunity where um you know you could be the social media guy for this guy and yes it did start as a side hustle now what i'm gathering here and if you're watching this is you don't have to wait until somebody actually gives you permission if you know how to facebook or you know instagram just stand up and like he like brandon says be confident and confidence actually wins all the way. So you moved on from starting your own company and now hiring your ex boss. Um, what else happened after that? What 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 drove you up until where you are right now? So after that, I tried I tried to start my own web development agency because that was, that was good. We had built him a beautiful website and we had gotten like three to four other clients. In my first month, I literally made eight thousand dollars doing web development. Now that's not average. No, nope, not everybody's going to do that. And that's my biggest thing I tell people. That is not a common statistic. That is just something that happened to me because of what I put into it. And you know, the connections I had at that point. So we did 8,000. And then the next month we did a little less. And the next month we averaged out. And it was like somewhere between that, I decided it wasn't for me. And now this was, this was something that what people thought I was crazy for because they had a profitable business. Like I like the company's name was Wevelop. It doesn't exist anymore. But I had a profitable business, and I one day I was just sitting down. I was like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And this is three to four months in from being a business I just started. I'm like, I, I can't do this. So we ended up finding another uh, group online that did web develop web development, and they were they were tight end agency. And I made a connection with them. We we took all my clients. And we gave them to that agency. We partnered with them and we gave them to that agency. And I told that agency, I was like, look, what I want from you is referrals to social media from all your clients. You can take over all the income from mine. So I went from 8,000, you know, $7,000 a month to zero within like two weeks again, which was a, that, that move was, that's probably where I get my confidence from is because I made that move consciously because I wanted to protect my future and be happy about what I did. And then from then on, in the next four months, I saw the movement on Instagram and I was like, hey, why don't I try this? So I started you know, dabbling around with Instagram. And in two months out of that, I grew an Instagram network between a couple profiles to about 20,000 followers. And I was like, holy shit, I could actually do this. And I was like, even more than that, I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed what I was doing. And so I was like, maybe the social media thing was for me. So I ended up going, you know, I watched Gary Vee. We got on content stuff. We started dropping content. I busted out video content, started my own group. Are you legendary, bro? How to win with social media. But it was never about the end game. It was about showing other people what I was doing at that point to actually start getting clients and winning. Like it was never about, hey, you should listen to me because I made this much money. You're done this. It was about this is what I'm doing right now that works. Great stuff. So obviously you did mention Gary Vee and I think you're taking off a leaf from his book where he actually says, do not create documents and which is what you exactly doing. Now, Brendan, exactly. are you legendary, bro? Are you legendary, bro? Yes. Yes. A lot of my group members actually prefer to me as the legend. But... <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, so what I'm getting from you is a lot of confidence, um, a lot of uh, tenacity in what you're doing, which is you don't get far if you don't push the boundary or the envelope far enough. 
okay? Correct, what correct. You, there's fire in your belly. Every, every single time that I want to level up or scale my business, I have to move forward. Like I have to do something big, like make a massive move. If I'm not confident, I find if I don't go at a deal or go at a customer, not like ferociously, but if I don't go at them with like feeling like I'm on fire, then I'm not going to close the deal. Or then it's like, if I even have a doubt in my mind, and that's one thing I try to tell everybody is confidence, build up your personal development, especially before starting a business, because the more confident you are and the more you know comfortable you are in your own skin, the better you're going to do. Because it really is, like people are going to eat you alive. I mean, you're going to close maybe one to three out of every 10 deals. You know, you're going to have, you're going to have seven no's before you get a yes, you know, and it's a numbers game. So it's kind of like confident. That's why I, I named my company Arrogant Media is because sometimes you just have to be arrogant to get your point across. Great stuff. Like we were talking earlier that you actually lose uh, customers or clients by trying to get them uh, instead of right. actually alienating them and bringing towards those people that actually go with your values and also really love um, your stuff and really would buy from you. Okay. Um, this has been legendary, man. I know you've got <laughs> quite a lot of, um, you know, uh, content out there, but how can somebody who's been watching this, um, you know, uh, jump on to what you're creating or how can they get in touch with you? They might have watched this and they're like, I think Brendan is my guy. How can they get a hold of you? Well, we are currently in the process of building a website called uh, www.brandoncody.com. My YouTube series is 365 days to six figures, which will start in exactly one week. And you can always, always, always request to be a part of my private group, Are You Legendary Bro? How to Win with Social Media. My moderator will get you in and then drop a video, start talking to me, and I'll start pumping you with value as much as possible. I don't charge a damn thing for it. Great stuff. That's really nice. <laughs> now, how... Maybe if somebody just comes in and is just meeting you for today and really doesn't know where to start, um, doesn't know how to even, you know, move an inch of the amount of success that you have made for yourself. If all this was stripped off of you, what's the first thing that you would start to do right now? But if I lost everything today, if everything was stripped from me, I would go back to the drawing board and learn exactly. I would, first of all, I build a digital business. I'd strictly focus on building a digital agency, whether it be social media, email, e-com, web design, something. If as long as it's a service that you can charge for around a thousand bucks a month minimum and then scale that with customers that keep you reoccurring, you've got a damn good model. Like I would learn everything I can about digital age entrepreneurs and digital run businesses and agencies, because that is where I believe right now the most successful companies will turn out. Great stuff. This is exactly the kind of person that's watching this now. They want to start their own uh, business, but they're not really quite sure how to go about it. And I think you've given us all the insights from where you started and how you got around to it and all the things that made you become who you are today and everything else that makes you the legend you are now. Now, Brendan, I cannot Absolutely. thank you enough for your time today. All right. And I know uh, you've, got, you've got you've got stuff to take care of and, you know, people to motivate and move. Do you have any last words for us, sir? Well, what I got to say, the, for the last words I got to say, first of all, thank you very much for having me. And second of all, the biggest thing you can do as a young hustler, as a, as a young person who needs to start a business or don't know where your next move is, the biggest thing you can do is actually just make a move. Just take your first steps. And then after those first steps, it's kind of a journey that leads its own nose. Great stuff. Well, you did mention steps and I wasn't gonna, but I have put <laughs> together 20 steps to actually starting your own digital marketing agency that you can download at the bottom of this show. And I also put links to your website and um, your group, Are You Legendary Bro? And um, essentially, Brandon, I cannot thank you enough for your time. Uh, hopefully You're very welcome. Thank you. Great stuff. Hopefully we'll have more of these chats later on when you've started your business. I mean, when you've started your website and when Arrogant Media is up in the news, we'll be reading a lot about you, right? Oh yeah, you will. We got a lot of PR coming. I'm supposed to be in Forbes soon. Great stuff. We can't wait to see <laughs> the full of your program. It's awesome, man. Thank you very much, man.
Thank you so much, Brandon.